Welcome to Ask the Expert, a webinar series brought to you by the Children's Tumor Foundation. CTF's mission is to drive research, expand knowledge, and advance care for the NF community. This new series is helping us pursue that mission by expanding knowledge about NF. Every month, we will invite experts to speak to a variety of topics relevant to living with NF, and those videos will be made available to you here on our website. What's even more exciting is that for two weeks after a video is posted, you can submit questions to that expert that will later be shared and answered on our site. This project will be hosted by me, Kate Kelts. I'm a registered nurse with nearly a decade of NF experience. I've been with the foundation since 2014, and I'm excited to bring this opportunity to our amazing NF community. Today, we're gonna to talk a little bit about clinical trials. What are they? Why should you be involved? How do you get involved? Where are they happening? Hopefully at the end of our session, you'll feel more informed and more able to be involved in your own healthcare. So let's get started. To begin, I'd like to define our terms. This can be important as you're speaking with your doctor or reading about a research study to understand what some of these um, research terms actually mean. So for to begin, a clinical trial, also called an interventional study, is, a potential, is when a potential treatment is going to be given and patient response will be assessed. For example, patients with NF1 and a plexiform are given a medication and changes in tumor size are measured or assessed. Then you have an observational study. This is when no treatments or interventions will be given and patients are only observed. For example, the genetic evaluation of NF1 patients with scoliosis. Participants are given, give a sample of their DNA for evaluation by researchers. What are the different roles in a research study? To begin, you have the principal investigator, also called the PI. This person is responsible for the scientific direction of the research study and often is the one who asks the initial research question. You have a sponsor, which is the organization or the person responsible for overseeing the study and analyzing the study data. The study coordinator, who is the primary point of contact for research subjects and for the study itself. This person works directly with subjects and data collection. You have the subject or patient. This is the person consenting to participate in the research study. And then you have collaborators, which is an or the organization other than the sponsor that may provide support which may include funding, design implementation, data analysis, or reporting. Study-related terms. You have the purpose of the study. This is the aim or the goal of the research study, the reason the study is being conducted. You have the protocol. This is the written description of a clinical study, including objectives, design, and method. And you have arms, which mean the groups or subgroups of subjects in a clinical trial who receive a specific intervention or possibly no interventions according to study protocol. Let's talk a little bit about phases. It's possible that you've heard things like, oh, this is a phase one clinical trial. But what does that, that actually mean? So to begin, there's phase zero. We call this exploration. We're looking at how do human cells respond, maybe to a drug or a treatment. Does the drug reach the tumor? This phase of a study is not expected to benefit the patient, but most likely will help others in the future. Phase one. In this phase, we're asking the question, is it safe? We look at a small group of patients. We assess the side effects. We figure out the best dose. And in this case, there may be benefit to the patient, but safety is the main concern. Phase two. Now we're asking, does it work? This will be a larger number of patients, there'll be safety rechecks, and efficacy is the main concern. Does this treatment actually work? Moving to phase three, we ask, is it better than what we already have? This will be an even larger number of patients, another recheck of safety and efficacy, and a comparison of how it works up against the available treatments. So comparing it to available treatments is the main focus of a phase three trial. And then we have phase four, which says, is there anything else that we need to know? There'll be continued study even after a drug is approved for use, and long-term safety and rare side effects are going to be the main concern in this phase. 
Let's move on to the eligibility. This is an important one because this is the question of who can participate. So you'll see things like inclusion criteria. These are factors which are necessary for someone to participate in a study. These can include a specific age, gender, medical condition, and other variables for which a study may want to control or assess. Then we have exclusion criteria. And these are going to be factors which will omit or prevent someone from participating in a study. And again, these can include age, gender, or medical condition. Let's talk about understanding risk. There will always be some risk when you participate in a research study, so let's evaluate that. When you think about personal risk, this will include anything in a study which exposes an individual to danger or possible harm. This can include injury, allergic reaction, illness, or social stigma. Thinking about benefits, there are universal or personal benefits. Universal benefits are when we think about gathering new data, more accurate information about a certain condition. This benefits the entire group of individuals affected by this condition. Personal benefits include anything in a study which may improve an individual's quality of life, well-being, and or health. Let's spend some time thinking about consent and assent. These are very important words and we need to understand them in order to participate in research. Consent is how you give your permission for researchers to include you in a study. It is important that you understand the consent documents you are asked to sign. For patients who are minors, a parent or guardian must sign the consent. Assent is used to express willingness to participate in research for individuals too young to give legal consent, but old enough to understand the proposed research study. It may be offered in addition to parental consent. I also want to always point out that you may choose to leave a research study at any point. Before signing a consent, you will want to ask any questions that you have and keep asking questions until you fully understand. The consent will include things like the protocol, any kind of treatments you might be given, testing they may want to do, and things of that nature. Consider taking the, home, the consent home to review it before signing. Remember the goal of consent is for you to understand what you are agreeing to. Confidentiality in research. All research studies are subject to the strictest confidentiality laws. HIPAA, the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, which is a bit of a mouthful, but this defines the policies, procedures, and guidelines for maintaining the privacy of any individual. All research studies will include an explanation of their privacy practices in the consent form. And again, I encourage you to make sure that you review and understand those practices before signing anything. Let's look at the NF registry as an example of a research study and how it responds to the need to keep information private. The registry is a great example because what it is doing is collecting health data that then must be kept private. So the registry, for example, adheres to HIPAA, which defines again the guidelines for protecting identifiable health information. This includes your birthday, your name, and things of that nature. There's also FISMA, which requires agencies to implement agency-wide policies on information security. Consider this something that is more extensive than HIPAA. Safe Harbor is a strict privacy protection for European citizens. Because the registry includes European citizens, it is also subject to these laws. Being Safe Harbor compliant allows, like I said, European citizens to participate in the registry. So, how do you find a clinical trial? The first place to start is to talk to your doctor. Your primary NF care provider will know about clinical trials and they can help you understand if you are eligible for one. You also have the option of using the NF registry. The benefit of the registry website is that the studies listed there are all NF relevant, current, and recruiting, and it is updated regularly by CTF. So let's look for a minute at how you would actually use 
the NF registry to find a trial. Okay, so when you come to the NF registry website, up here you'll see this tab, Clinical Trials. Select that, and it takes you to this page. Here you're going to have information about what we've been talking about today, clinical trial phases, risks and benefits, questions to ask. But if you go over to this box, you'll see Trials Seeking Participants. You select that, and right here you can see the name of a study, a very brief explanation, maybe not so brief, whether it's recruiting, what phase that it's in, and you'll be able to scroll through and read what's kind of going on in the world of NF research. If you select one of these, like this, it's actually going to take you over to the clinical trials website, which we're going to discuss next. So again, I want to reiterate that if you find a trial on the registry website that you think you might be eligible for, please talk to your healthcare provider. They are the one that will be able to help you understand if you actually meet eligibility requirements. So now, so I talked a little bit, we saw the clinical trials website. So let's think about how would I find a clinical trial if I know what I'm looking for? So an example would be my 17 year old child has NF1 and a growing plexiform neurofibroma. I am interested in finding a clinical trial he could participate in. This is a question I've actually received. So we're going to go back to the clinical trials website right here. And right here we have a search box that you can see I'm hovering over and we're going to try doing a search. NF1, you can see I've researched this before, and Plexiform. Search. Now here's a couple things to notice. This is now displaying it by list. You can display by topic. You can even look at a map of where the studies are happening. I usually stick with list. I also, if I'm looking for something that a person can participate in, I'm going to select this only show open studies box. By doing that, I'm going to get rid of the studies that are already closed or no longer recruiting. Now, I want to always tell you that just because this says they're recruiting here, that does not mean that they are recruiting from all over the country. Many of these studies are happening in locations where they have a large pool of patients from their own clinic. So keep that in mind. However, once you're here, you can read the descriptions and choose one, study of NF1 patients aged 2 to 21 with plexiforms. Okay, so that would suit my 17 year old boy that I'm looking for. And here, I would suggest that you check to see where it's happening. Okay, um, you can also look at down at the bottom. Some of this information is going to be difficult to understand, but if you go down to the bottom, there's, L, there's inclusion and exclusion criteria but also there's contact information. Now, as you can see here, this one is happening in Canada, but you can still contact them right here. They provide contact information. But again, I want to reinforce that you speak to your own NF care provider before contacting anyone about a clinical trial. See, I, and so then let's move on. <clears throat> Let's talk a little bit about access since we did just see the study that's in Canada. Most research studies do not have the resources to cover travel costs. This means that if you want to participate in a study that's not near you, you will be responsible for getting yourself there. Many studies will, however, have multiple sites, and this means that there may be a study sponsored at one medical center that allows patients to enroll and be seen by their local NF center. Also, being seen in an NF clinic for your routine care is an important way to access clinical trials. The Children's Tumor Foundation is working hard on our NF clinic network, which means these are clinics that have taken some extra steps and shown their expertise and experience with NF. And if you can be seen at one of those sites, that is one of the best ways to make sure that you are aware of new research and new trials that are coming out. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hopefully I've been able to answer some of your questions. And if you have further questions, you'll see that there's an option to submit them. And then you'll receive a response from me that will actually be posted here 
for everyone to benefit from your question and then my response. As always, if you have any further questions that you want to contact me about, you can reach me here at CTF. I'm so happy to have talked with you today. I hope that it was helpful. And remember, together we can end NF.